This is the Richmond 62cc chainsaw. It appears to be a Chinese built Red Max G621. The price delivered to my carport by FedEx was $219. What you see here is everything that comes in the shipping box. Power head, bar and chain, felling spikes, brake handle, bar cover, and some tools. The best thing to do with the tools is toss them. Everything else looks okay. I think I bought this because it was late winter. There was not a saw on my workbench, and I was jonesing to twist a wrench. I was also really curious about the quality of the Chinese saws that I had recently seen advertised. Are they robust enough to serve as a regular work saw, or are they throwaways, or somewhere in between? This work is aimed at documenting the good and the not so good. Before we assemble the pieces, let's take a peek under the hood. We need to look for any damage or defects or other problems. The first one that comes up is the throttle lock. Well really the throttle lock seems to be working, but it doesn't have any effect on the carb's throttle lever. There seems to be too much slot in the throttle linkage. Here's what we find. The throttle linkage, or bar, has been poorly formed and if left like this will also cause excessive wear in the carb throttle lever. Removing the throttle linkage requires removing the carb and the handle cover. Then the wire can be bent to the correct angles and length. I had to do this four times before it was correct. The wire gauge seems a little small. With everything right, the throttle lock opens the throttle for easy starts and the linkage works smoothly. Time to put everything together. First the felling dogs. Then the chain brake lever. Next we'll use the 36 cent guide bar gauge. The bar is a .063. But when we try to mount the bar and chain, there's a problem. The clutch is locked up tight. After removing the spark plug, starter assembly, and using some old starter rope for a piston stop and removing the left-handed clutch retaining nut, the clutch drum is still stuck. A few minutes of careful tapping on the splines of the drum frees it up. It looks like some thread locking compound has found its way into the clutch needle bearing. The bearing has never been lubed, not good. I feel lucky. The bearing comes off with some effort, is cleaned and mixed and lubed with grease. Although there is a grease journal board from the end of the shaft, there is no axial bore, so you can't pump grease into it. The clutch is mounted along with the starter assembly and spark plug. The cylinder and air filter covers are mounted. The bar and chain are mounted and adjusted. The chain is ready for fuel and chain lube. Fill with gas and oil. Tuning was a little tricky. First I just set the low speed mixture in the usual manner, then set the high speed mixture to max out at 10,500 RPM. But it didn't run well when hot. Finally I just tuned in the wood. When it got good power I found it was running a little above 12,000 RPM unloaded. Because it was new and because I am conservative, I enriched it just enough so that it was running 11,200 RPM unloaded. Back in the shop, we find that the air filter is not working. This seems to be caused by a misalignment 
between the air filter cover and the air filter. The air filter has been damaged during assembly at the factory and the knob that holds it will soon bite the dust. The cover is cut away and the resulting hole is fixed by riveting some Husqvarna plastic in its place. A new filter was installed. A new knob and silicon compound was used generously at possible entry points including between the two clamshell pieces of the air filter. Dust has been reduced but the jury is still out. This is the saw's first day on the job. Three little ponderosa pines lost to bark beetle. It's really a nice saw to use, light and agile, but with abundant power. It would be much better with a 20 inch guide bar. And of course the question comes up, is it worth $219? Is it really ready for the show? Well, no. It's no saw that you would order three for your crew. It isn't there yet. But those saws cost three or four times as much. If you enjoy working on saws, I'd say go for it. If you need a saw for a few days a year to cut firewood or as a component in your disaster kit for the next earthquake, hurricane, or tornado, maybe. If you're confident in your maintenance abilities, try one. This is an old school style saw. Simple, unaffected by the EPA. Run it rich if you like. There's no rev limiter. 
If you have it tuned correctly, you won't need one. If you're pissed about what has happened to saws in the last 15 years, you'll love this machine. If you think that stratified charge saws are the greatest thing since sliced bread, it may not be for you. I don't usually use anything smaller than a 70cc saw, but this one is growing on me.